Um, Nira, would you say something? Because uh, you're yeah. the only one that. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. I'm saying. I don't know why it was coming. Can around. you hear me well? Uh, yes, there's a kind of a. And after I go, okay, uh, this is better. Okay. okay. I'll be in mute. Okay, here we are. And uh, good, evening, good evening to everybody and welcome to you, Sophia, where minds meet online. And tonight uh, we are going to sit back and enjoy the fact that we will be in Argentina without having to fly about 16, 17 hours without having to find a parking place because there's a tango evening somewhere. And uh, what I prepared for tonight is basically trying to get to know this huge piece of land, Argentina. If you just want to make a little calculation, if you take Israel, the whole of Israel, whether you include the Sinai Desert or you don't, uh, it doesn't really matter. You can put it into Argentina about 1,200 times. That's 1,200 Israels fit into the huge, vast landscape of Argentina. Argentina starts in the south, where it's very hot very tall mountains, and it goes all the way down almost to the southern pole. It gets down to the Magdalen Straits, and uh, you would think that such an enormous piece of land would have many centers, yet this is not the case. The one real center that everybody wants to be part of is Buenos Aires. But I would like to start this evening showing you a trailer to a film that was finished about two and a half years ago. It's about a folklore singer and guitar player called Eduardo Falou. Uh, he made a film about the landscape of dream. And the landscape of dream for him, uh, say, could you please mute your phone because I hear an echo. Okay, I'll mute you. Um, the film is called Landscape of Dreams. And in it, we see... What builds up the culture and the spirit of Argentina and how everything kind of is uh, swamped into this huge European, South American capital of uh, Buenos Aires. So let's uh, sit back and enjoy about four minutes of uh, a trailer about Eduardo Falou. Another interesting thing, Eduardo Falou was born in 1923 to Syrian parents. And uh, he married an Indian lady, uh, Indian as in uh, Ameri Indian. And his children, one, the daughter, who should be in her early 60s today, teaches Arab literature in uh, Houston, Texas. So it's just a little thing to show us how much influence the people that came from outside of Argentina actually executed on the lifestyle and on the culture of this huge piece of land. So let's watch Eduardo Falou and his kind of Argentina, a more dreamy Argentina, less coarse 
than the tango, less raw than the tango. I would almost say more naive than the tango. Here we go. This is where it starts, said Eduardo Ballou, pointing at the cactus. And from here, it goes up into the air like the condor that flies over the mountains, the mountains that we've seen 
uh, the mountains in the western northwestern part of Argentina, uh, something that is very characteristic of Argentina is that uh, the winds there, as they are in Chile, are very, very strong, and they paint the landscape in a very specific way. It's very hard to see in the back land of Argentina a tree that stands tall. All the trees lean toward the south because most of the winds come from the north and go south. So you'll see most of the trees are doing a kind of a uh, kneeling towards the southern sea and uh, it's, it's uh, once you get out of the city you see it immediately you see those vast landscapes that are washed by a wind that promises something that might happen and it's as if the trees are looking to see where is it happening and they are bowing over trying to see better. Argentina and uh, mainly Buenos Aires has been the center for uh, people from all over uh, South America the uh, culture in Argentina was such that it was always between uh, dictatorships, dictatorships that were quite strange. Perón, uh, the guy who reigned in a very uh, bloody way over Argentina, uh, the guy who was responsible for the desaparecidos, for the lost people, the people that will never come back, was a great friend of musicians. He was a great friend of uh, Carlos Garabel before he died. He was very young then. And he was also a great friend of Astor Piazzolla. Uh, Argentina was always the center of rebellion. Argentina is the place that gave the world uh, one of the most famous icons of rebellion. I'm talking about Dr. Che Guevara, Ernesto Che Guevara, who was a medical doctor and uh, he's from Argentina. And what he did in life is he tried to find a place where his ideas will allow him to become not just a revolutionary, but somebody who might really have an influence, and he found that in, in Cuba. Going back to Argentina, Argentina also collected the inspiration from the whole of the Latin world, and as we'll see a little bit later, also obviously from, from Europe, because in 1540, 40 years, by the way, uh, after the uh, Cabral, the Captain Cabral landed in Bahia in Brazil, 40 years later, Argentina was found, so to speak, was explored and uh, found, but it took the Spaniards much less time to overtake Argentina almost completely and introduce the Catholic Church introduced the Church of Rome and uh, very fast the language became the language of almost everybody. Uh, we do not have in Argentina as many unknown tribes as we have in Brazil uh, for a very simple reason. We do not have the Amazon. And uh, so everything is kind of arid and open. From Chile, which is to the west of uh, Argentina, came a lot of songs 
of hope, a lot of songs uh, that talked about things that in Chile became things of the past. And here we have uh, one of the great uh, Argentinian singers, Mercedes Sosa, who passed away last year, two months only after she performed in Israel, by the way. Uh, she suffered for the last 15 years of her life uh, very badly. She could hardly speak. Uh, sorry, she could hardly walk. And, uh, and she could hardly breathe. She became bloated up. And here she sings a, thing that, uh, a song that, for me, really expresses what Argentina means to Latin America, why it is the voice that we know of Latin America. Mercedes Souza is saying thank you to life. Gracias a la vida.
this is Mercedes Souza Sosa singing this very beautiful song, uh, Thank You for Life. And uh, what he says towards the end is, uh, thank you for giving me the possibility to distinguish between black and white, between destiny and opportunity. Thank you for giving me life that fills me with all the things that everybody around the world has an emotion for and which is the making of my song and which is the making of the song of all of you because the song of everybody is the song of the heart and it's within this song that I thank life Before we get into the mood of the tango, I would like also to uh, tell you a little bit about uh, other things that were happening and are happening in Argentina, where the uh, folk song is very, very strong. And uh, we will now go back in time to... Uh, the early 70s, where Ariel Ramirez, who was one of the main composers in Argentina, and uh, I would like to say that his way of writing music and his way of collecting the material for his music was very similar to what Jan Janacek did uh, and the Bartok, uh, even Schubert to a certain degree, uh, Mahler definitely. They just went out to the villages and found the voice of the people, found the, the, not only the music of the people, but the voice of the people, and made a uh, fantastic contribution through all that, turning into a music that can be recorded and remembered forever. Um, Ariel Ramirez... Uh, wrote those uh, sounds into what is called, what is known today as uh, Misa Criolla, or the way that the Portemio, the Buenos Aires people, pronounce it, Mr. Misa Criolla. In other words, uh, it's the uh, high mass of the indigenous people of Argentina. And the music, all of the music, as we will hear in, the, in, in a second, is a fantastic melange of um, Roman Catholic words and ideas and atmosphere even, together with rhythms of Africa, with the spirit of the Latin America people, you can hear the way that uh, everything moves, not in uh, thank you, Lord, for being alive, but in thank you, Lord, for making me, me. Uh, we'll hear again uh, Mercedes Sosa because it's just the, in my uh, book, it's the best rendition of uh, Gloria out of Mr. Criosa. Uh, and you'll hear, if you forget, that it's out of a great mass that is supposed to be sung and is sung in, uh, uh, on Sundays. It does sound like a, uh, actually, it sounds very much like a folk song and very much like a folk song of the, of the Andes. Uh, you can almost hear the wings of the condor as he flies above. And as you see here, Mercedes Sosa lifts her head up, not so much to God as to the top of the mountain, uh, to the flight of the condor. So let's listen to her. Uh, good evening, Josta. Good to have you here with us. I hope you are listening to us. I can't see that you have 
and the equipment, but, uh, well, I hope you do hear and see us. So we'll listen to uh, Mercedes Sosa saying Gloria out of Mr. Criosa, written by Ariel Ramirez.
I would like to welcome Masahiro, who is here with us from Tokyo, where, if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, at early in the morning. So, welcome to you, Masahiro. I hope you hear us and uh, you will enjoy the rest of the evening here with us. And I said, the music of Ariel Ramirez was the music of somebody who had his ear to the folk songs and the folk music of his, uh, of his land. By the way, until now, we did not meet as yet one artist that was actually born in Buenos Aires. Um, Mercedes Sosa was born outside of of uh, Buenos Aires, about 70 kilometers to the uh, south, in the middle of the Tampas, and uh, we saw Eduardo Falou, who was born in Cordoba, which is up in the northwestern part of Argentina. Ariel Ramirez uh, was born in uh, Buenos Aires, but he was uh, the first generation of Argentinian. His uh, family came from uh, Bulgaria and Spain. And um, getting closer and closer to the tango, and we will meet the tango in just a second, we have here the possibility to find another type of folk music, which then got together with other types to make the tango. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Masahiro says no sound. Can you hear me now, Masahiro? I hope you do. And one of the things that uh, created later the tango, or that was accumulated into the tango, is a dance called Milonga. Milonga in uh, Paraná, which is one of the very strong languages in South America. It actually is uh, a language that was born somewhere in the middle of Paraguay with some of the tribes there. And Milonga means lyrics, uh, but Milonga is also a song, uh, a, a type of a dance. It's a dance that talks about longing, that talks about melancholy. And uh, now we are going to meet Ariel Ramirez, who together with uh, Eduardo Falou uh, will play us Milonga Uruguaya. It's very interesting to uh, remember that uh, while Buenos Aires is called Porteño, or the people that come from Buenos Aires are all called Porteños, and they call the people from Uruguay Orientales, because, uh, well, they live to the east, and uh, because once, until 1825, it was one uh, place where there was no land. There were people, but there was no central government. Uh, very, very sad story. In 1822, the Spanish colonists gathered all the uh, the last of the uh, Amerindian uh, head of the tribes and invited them all because they said we're going to sign a peace treaty and we'll all come without weapons. Now the Amerindians believing, uh, they were called the Yamana, believing that this is what it was going to be and they prayed to their gods and put all their weapons aside and came with their children and old people and women to the meeting and only the Spaniards left the meeting. 
four people, four people only of the Indians were alive and were shipped to France to be studied as a subspecies of humans. Terrible story, uh, but it also gave the uh, in the Independence to this very, not really looked at, and they're called Orientales. Now, uh, what we'll see in, in the movie, in the clip that I'm going to show you, is the beginning of switching over to the more vibrant rhythms that will bring uh, the tango in just a second. Uh, we see here on stage about the hundred people that sang until now selected pieces from the Misa Criosha. Misa Criosha was written, it's interesting to know, was written for a hundred voices among the choir and the, uh, and the instrument, and it was also written for 20 guitars, different sizes and types of guitar. So we'll see the people on stage, but what we will hear is the Milonga Uruguasha. Uh, it's a dance and a type of music that was played in the eastern part of, uh, of Argentina, uh, where today would be uh, Montevideo. And again, the music was written by uh, Ramirez, and we'll hear, hear him and see him play together with Eduardo Falou on the guitar. So let's uh, relax, sit back, and enjoy and please mute your mics while we do.
We are in Marseille, in the southern part of France, the year 1889. A young prostitute who used to work in one of the bars in the port was involved in a killing of one of her clients. Her story is not clear whether she was actually part of the killing or whether it was her pimp. Anyhow, uh, the young Rosette, that was her name, did not want to wait to find out whether she was going to be charged with any uh, crime. What she did is she succeeded in convincing a captain on a freight ship to take her on, and the freight ship was going to Argentina. It was a very long journey because it had to pass through Germany and pick up more and more uh, freight. And by the time the ship got to Montevideo, which is just across the Rio del Plata, the river from Buenos Aires, Rosetta almost gave birth to a child unaided on board the ship. And the doctor took her to the hospital in Montevideo in 1890. January, Charles was born, and she called him Charles Garde Dieu, Charles, may God protect you. Charles grew up in a, uh, a little uh, neighborhood. Maldonado called in Montevideo, uh, and from a very, very young age, he was loved by everybody. He had those dreamy brown eyes. Uh, his mother never really succeeded in overcoming the uh, terrible birth that she had to go through, and she died when the child was only four years old. And uh, he was taken into the house of a aging musician and his very loving wife, who started calling him Carlito, and instead of the God Dieu, they gave him the name Carlito Gardel. Carlito Gardel, if you tell anybody from Argentina that he was actually son of a prostitute from Bordeaux, uh, from Marseille, and was born in Montevideo, uh, you risk quite badly, so don't do that, but that's the truth. Uh, that's the story of Carlito Gardel, and Carlito Gardel had the genius. First of all, when he was nine years old, uh, his adoptive parents moved to Porteño, to Buenos Aires, and uh, he started taking music lessons, and uh, he had a very, very beautiful song, uh, voice, it said. His guitar playing was always a little bit uh, poor, but he had a fantastic ear, and he started composing his own songs. And uh, Carlito Gardel is very much, can be seen as the most important influence in tango and the most important uh, creator of tango. I would like to start getting acquainted with tango this evening with uh, a song by Carlito Gardel. Now, we have to realize that the tango is born in the back streets of Buenos Aires. It's not born in the concert hall. It's born in the cabaret. It's born in 
the whole houses. It's as if you can hear the tragic history of each and every one of the clients that would come to the whole house. Everybody has a sad story when it comes to a whole house, and that sad story is the beginning of the tango. Now, we also have to remember that 99.9% .9 of the tangos, the lyrics were written by poets. Uh, the words are always very sad words, and they're words that talk to your heart. The song that we're going to hear now is one of the first songs that uh, made uh, Carlito Garodel famous. It's called Volvió Una Noche. She came back one night as if nothing happened. And she looked at me and said, the past can be forgotten. I am not the one that left you and made you suffer. I suffered much more. And I would like to come back. And I would love you to forgive me and to take me back. And he looks at her and says to himself, because he doesn't have the heart to offend her, you're talking lies. We've been through this again and again and again. It's just those lies. The past is always here as a mute teacher whose voice is never heard. Carlito Gardel volvió una noche. And then in the morning, after he did agree that she sleeps in the side room, and she promised him that he'll find everything 
breakfast was, his breakfast ready. But when he woke up, he didn't find his purse. All the money was gone. And of course, no breakfast. And she, he never saw her again. What is the origin of the tango? There are many, many ideas where it came from. Definitely, it's a combination of atmosphere, of sounds, of rhythm, and above all, of il macho, el macho latino, the guy who looks to be so strong, but at the end of the day, has a very soft heart. He can kill, but he'll always be very gentle with the ladies. And uh, another famous song of uh, Gardel is a song called Volver, which we're going to be listening in a moment. And uh, Volver will take us back to one of the more secure origins of the tango. Some say that the tango comes from tamba, which is a word for a certain type of dance uh, from Uganda, where most of the uh, slaves came to Southern America, to uh, Argentina. Uh, and, but after we listen to Volver, I will tell you a little story that the tango, both as a name and uh, almost as a rhythm, but definitely as a definition of the song of melancholy, already existed and existed in Europe. But first, let's have Carlito Gardel sing as Volver, which means coming back. And uh, we are going to jump from the Volver, uh, the coming back by uh, Carlos Gardel, to Spain, to Valencia, where Estrella Morento, who was invited by Pedro Almodóvar to 
uh, give her voice to Penelope Cruz in the film that was called Volver. I play con ella, talk to her. And let's hear what she does with Volver. Estrella Moreno is one of the most famous flamenco sing uh, singers. And flamenco lives uh, very happily in the shade of the Plaza del Toro, where the Toreada are taking place, where the macho is fighting with the beast, and if he kills the beast, he is the man. And tango is a very ancient song and dance from Valencia. So let's hear what Estrella Moreno does with Carlos Gardel's Volver. By the way, it's not the version that you would hear in the movie of Le Conea, but it's the same voice and the same song. Here we go. like uh, you're supposed to do when you sing at home. She says, thank you to my family, to my uncle, to my aunt, to my friends, to my father, and to everybody. I'm at home and I want to sing for you.
Astor Piazzolla. Astor Piazzolla was born outside of uh, a game of uh, Buenos Aires to Italian parents who, when he was about four years old, moved to New York, where his father, Nonino was his name, Nonino Piazzolla, found an old, something that looks like an accordion, that actually is a bandoneon, which he didn't see a long time since he was a child. And as young Astor was a very gifted as a musician, he played the piano, he played any instrument that he could get his hands on. He bought the instrument for his son, and in no time at all, Astor Piazzolla became a very well-known uh, figure in the nightlife of Little Italy in New York. When he was 12 years old, he already spoke four languages. He spoke French, Italian, Spanish, and English, each one as if it was his mother tongue, because he learned each and every one from either his mother or his father, uh, and his surrounding. And as it happens, when he was 13, he participated in a movie where the big star was Carlito Gardel, in the movie called El Diaz Que Me Quieres, The Day You Will Love Me Again. Uh, he participated as a little child there. But Carlitos Gardel heard him play the Bandoneon and offered him to come with him on a tour. And uh, Astor, who was very, very excited and uh, <laughs> obviously wanted to go on that tour with Carlito Gardel, the tour would, was supposed to go first to Argentina, uh, then to uh, Montevideo, and then to Mexico, and then to uh, Paris and London came to his father and says, uh, Papa, I would like to go. And uh, the father was actually very open-minded and uh, really liked the idea that he had a uh, uh, precocious genius at home, a precocious musician, uh, did not agree with the idea that he would go at the age of 13 on the world tour and said no. Uh, later, Aspa did not take it too badly, and uh, in his autobiography, which came out many, many years later, he writes that uh, his father unknowingly actually saved his life, because it was on that world tour that the airplane that carried Carrito Gardel and the whole of his entourage and orchestra was lost in one of the black holes over the uh, triangle of the Caribbeans. And uh, so he was saved by not being able at 13 to do what he wanted to do. When he was 16 in 1937, he came back to uh, Buenos Aires and uh, as the family was quite poor, he had to help the, uh, the economy of the house. And he, what he did, he played in cabarets. He played the bandoneon in cabarets, and sometimes the cello, and sometimes the contrabass. And, uh, and it happens one night, Arturo Rubinstein, who lived in Buenos Aires in those years, heard him and said, uh, you should pick up classical music. Ravel, uh, Stravinsky, uh, Mahler, which he did. I mean, uh, the boy stopped sleeping at night, and that's what he did. He worked four or five hours in the uh, cabaret, and then he would come home and study all the 
manuscripts of Ravel and Stravinsky, etc., etc., etc. And then, as he tells it, he became lucky. He, he wrote a lot. He wrote more and more, and uh, wrote quite a lot. Uh, at that time, he met a uh, poet, a very famous poet, from, uh, who was born to a uh, father from uh, Buenos Aires and to a mother from Montevideo, who was born in Montevideo, called Horacio Ferrer. And uh, they got together and were very, very friendly. And uh, they wrote together an opera, which we will see parts of uh, now and parts of later, uh, called Maria de Buenos Aires. But it was in 1953 that he came together with a very famous French uh, composer and composer teacher, Nadine Boulanger, who was the inspiration of many composers and pianists and conductors, like uh, Arthur Rubinstein himself and uh, many, many others, told him, okay, if you want me to teach you, let me listen to what you do. So he played some songs for her that he wrote, and she listened very nicely, and she said, hmm, that's very good. That's uh, Ravel, and that's uh, Stravinsky. And then she looked at him and said, where is Astor Piazzolla? And uh, for a moment, as he tells it, he froze, he didn't know what to do. And then he played uh, something that he wrote for the opera called La Ballada para un Loco, the ballad for a crazy man. And she had tears in her eyes and said, this is Astor Piazzolla. It's from here. You have to keep going. So we'll now hear Ballada para un Loco with uh, another legend of uh, Argentina music, Adriana Varela, and uh, Roberto Guayanetche, who is a singer, actor, poet, uh, quite an incredible presentation we have here. Hasta Piazzola. Horacio Ferrer, lyrics, Roberto Guineche, and the one and only Adriana Varela. Here we go. And of course, here we are already in very much into the classical tango.
crazy is he and crazy am I, uh, the ballot for the crazy man who feels that he loses his sense every time he goes out to the streets of uh, coronavirus because he doesn't know whether he's flying or whether the streets are disappearing under his feet. And this is just an introduction. Thank you very much, Faye. And this is just an introduction to the tango because we can, and I hope we will, uh, do it again and again and go deeper and deeper into it. I would like to end this evening with another number from the opera, Maria de Buenos Aires. Maria de Buenos Aires was written in 1948 and only became known in the world after Adios Nonino, which is the song that uh, uh, Astor Piazzolla wrote in memory of his father, Nonino, and uh, which he then performed all over the world from Paris to Germany to Tokyo, all over the world. Adios Nonino, very famous, very well known. Uh, you'll find it on our page in uh, Facebook. Uh, but I would like to finish with a very interesting opera presentation in Belgium, in a town called Gand. They made, a, well, it was written as an opera. And uh, this is what it looks like when it's on stage. And what I like very much about this uh, presentation is uh, that although it's in Belgium, it smells of the rotten back streets of Buenos Aires. Let's look at it. Uh, thank you very much, Faye, for willing to help. And I hope that everybody will get together and uh, we will find a way. Uh, so, thank you again for being with us at Sofia with Minds Meet Online, and we're looking for more and more minds, more inquisitive, curious, and uh, interested minds. Uh, let me say good evening and goodbye from Sofia with Minds Meet Online with Yo Soy Maria.
from the opera Maria de los de Buenos Aires. It's performed in uh, Belgium. We heard uh, she is Argentinian, by the way, Maria Albrina, sing Yo Soy Maria. The words are actually a play. Horacio Ferrer, the poet. Uh, wrote a kind of a play on the idea Maria is Buenos Aires. She's not from Buenos Aires, she is Buenos Aires. And uh, some of the words are very, very beautiful. Uh, good evening, Katie, welcome with us. Uh, your camera is showing more the corner of your room. <laughs> it's kind of a little bit... Uh, it's fixed too high, but anyhow. So, uh, ah, now it's much better. Now we can see you. Good evening. Welcome to you, Sophia. And uh, in the middle of the song, just before the end, uh, she says, uh, I'm a real wish because I know how to dance and to love at the same time. And of course, it takes the witch to know how to do the two. Sometimes uh, they say it takes a witch to know how to do even one of them. And as a good night, I would like to finish off with uh, obviously each and every one of you are welcome to get up and uh, Put your uh, dancing shoes exactly where you want them, and we are going to be listening to four tangos of Gardel as we silently lead one after the other the uh, Sofia where our minds have met again and where we now get into the act of dancing. We will hear some of the most famous of Carlos Gardel uh, tangos. Let's not forget that the quality is not going to be fantastic because uh, sadly uh, Carlito died in 1935 in uh, in a very mysterious way. Nobody really knows what happened because they never found the uh, remaining of the airplane. So here we go. Eight minutes of tango with Carlito Gardel, the greatest of them all. There are many more names, many more tango singers. We have Varela, which we met tonight. We have Yupanqui. We have... Uh, Julio Sosa, uh, so many others, uh, Carlo Roberto. This is a taste of what tango can and will offer when we turn this into a series. Vamos, Carlito, vamos.
Well, obviously, the truth is that uh, Carlito Gardel never died. He's alive, lives in Italy. He is the Prime Minister of Italy. If you just look well, you'll see the face. And, uh, well, Mr. Berlusconi was a singer when he was young. And now he just whistles at anything that is thrown at him. Forget that. Don't tell him I said it because it's hand is very long, and whatever he cannot reach, he has somebody else that reaches for him. Thank you very much for being with us here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And we'll meet again with Tango. We'll meet again with the Bossa Nova. We are having uh, some heavy and interesting evenings coming along. We have a, a soprano from Mexico who sings uh, the Baroque. Eugenia Ramirez to be with us, and many more surprises. So, again, thank you very much. If you have any kind of suggestions, things you would like to hear at the Sofia, things you would like to share with others at the Sofia, you're welcome to email to me at dan.shora at com. Thank you very much. Hope to see you again. And may the manifestation and the revolution be with you and take us to the promised land. Bye.